Hello, this is Anthony Redamonti with Copy Controls. Today I'm going to be talking about um, PVT and uh, what is uh, PVT and how you can use it. I'm also going to be talking about a, a constant acceleration algorithm. So, um, for a nice description of PVT, uh, let's go to copycontrols.com. Uh, okay, we go to support. General Resources, App Notes, we go down to 141. So this gives you a nice description of what PBT is. Um, you load positions, velocities, and times uh, to the drive, and the drive will uh, interpolate points in between each PBT point. Um, so that's, that's kind of how it works. So um, what I'll do is uh, I'll be talking about um, as well a, uh, an algorithm used here. But um, to kind of uh, explain PVT a little better, um, uh, here's a, a Python script. Um, so this is a text file here uh, called pause1.txt. So here we have uh, 61 points. These are positions. And um, this is just a list of positions that I want the drive to uh, go to. Um, and we will see, uh, here's a Python script. Now, uh, this script um, will uh, convert those positions um, to PVT points using an algorithm. Uh, I have an algorithm in here for constant acceleration. Um, so it'll uh, generate velocities that will give me a near uh, constant acceleration. Um, and so that way we don't get uh, tracking errors and we uh, will see that uh, it, it smooths out the acceleration for us and the velocity. Um, so uh, here I'm in the, in the uh, Python script here, I, I load that file, uh, and then I set my time to 5 milliseconds, uh, and then I will um, plot the uh, different moves, and I'm going to plot, just to show uh, how this algorithm works, I'm going to plot out the different iterations of the algorithm. You only need to run the algorithm uh, three times before uh, you really have a, a, a finite set of values. Um, finite set of velocities. So uh, let me go ahead and do that. Uh, we use uh, uh, Python uh, matplotlib, so it's a nice uh, feature for graphs. Um, so cd documents. Okay. All right. So the first iteration is move with zero velocities. So this is with uh, just with zero velocities uh, entered in, kind of a rough estimate, um, going through the iteration of the acceleration algorithm, uh, the constant acceleration algorithm. One time we get this uh, output. So we can see here we kind of have rounded uh, we uh, round, uh, this this doesn't look great let me see if I can zoom in <clears throat> zoom in okay so as you can see there we kind of want to get rid of those that un uh, not very smooth it comes up and then doesn't look continuous so then we go to the uh, iteration one or iteration zero, I should say. And already we can see that those, um, kind of compare the two, uh, iteration zero really starts to smooth out those velocities for us, which is great. And as you can see here, the acceleration doesn't go so, uh, we have less of a uh, extended um, acceleration. So here we have uh, 
two million. Um, so it's like it's jumping down to two and a half million, uh, negative two and a half million, uh, 10 to the uh, 10 times uh, counts per second squared. So over here, it uh, reduces the acceleration. So that's good. We want less, you know, more of a constant acceleration, which is what this uh, algorithm does. Go to the uh, third iteration. Uh, as we can see there, um, smooths it out even more. And then not much of a difference in the final um, between the uh, third and fourth um, iteration there isn't much of a difference, so that's why we only we'll, we'll only need to run it four times. Um, yeah, so hopefully that was this is helpful in, in uh, showing you exactly what this algorithm is doing, um, smoothing out your velocities, making as near constant acceleration as you can uh, possibly achieve given your input positions. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll post this Python script. Um, you just have to download the matplotlib uh, module from Python online, then you can run it. Um, and I use Python uh, 3.7 for this. But um, yeah, so this, uh, I converted this to CML. So this will be a CML example. Uh, I also did the same thing for CMO. So this will be on, on our uh, standard CMO examples, uh, this algorithm. It's really helpful for people that, for customers that want to use uh, just input uh, positions. They don't want to have to do all this calculation for the velocities and, uh, you know, they want nice smooth motion. And that's what this algorithm does. Uh, so here I have a CML example. Um, we we'll start at the top. Uh, the following is for dual axis drive and uh, starts a linkage move uh, where you load PVT points um, and it takes a list of positions for each axis. Um, and it uses the algorithm. So if we go down here, I have a CAN drive. I actually have an MP3, and I'm only using two of the axes on my MP3 drive. Um, here we have the bit rate, the node ID, and uh, of the first axes. Uh, and then here we have uh, the velocity lists. So I'm going to fill those in with data later on. Here are my position lists for axes A and then for axes B. These position lists uh, have to be the same length. Um, otherwise, one move will finish before the other one has and you get, you get an error thrown. So it must be the same uh, amount of PBT points sent to each axis if you have a multi-axis drive. Um, and yeah, so here, uh, what we do in, in CML for C++, uh, we create our own class and then we're going to inherit from the uh, linkage trajectory class in CML. So um, I create, uh, that, that way I can, um, I can initiate a, a PVT move. And really CML is great for uh, PVT because it handles all of the uh, buffer management in the background. I just have to, uh, I just initiate the, the move and CML handles the rest. Um, the only thing I have to do is to uh, define the virtual class next segment, which tells CML where to get the next PVT point. But uh, going from the top here, uh, PVT constant Excel, that's my custom class I made, uh, position uh, lists, and then uh, the time between each point. Uh, this is, means it's a two axes drive, uh, or uh, two axes are being used to mention. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and run this now, um, and it should uh, display. Uh, it should just uh, run the uh, algorithm. So if we look, connected over serial simultaneously. <clears throat> so if we go up to one important note with PVT. You never want to have, you don't want to have the first position be far away from where your motor currently is. So right now, this is sitting at 270. You know, that first PVT point should really be 270. But what I'll do is, since the first is zero for each axis, I'm going to zero both um, 
motors. But uh, if that's not an option for you, you can obviously change your list in the code to match your current position. Um, but uh, yeah, so now if I start this up, let me go ahead and plot this and see what it looks like. So if we go to the scope and we go to, uh, we'll plot the position, actual motor position for axes B. And then we'll do the same for profile velocity for axes B. So now, uh, yeah, that looks good. Okay. Uh, we'll do 12 seconds is fine. Media trigger. Okay. So I'll start the CML example. It should just go right ahead and begin to move. All right. Now I'm going to record. <clears throat> so we can see that uh, CML is feeding the points as they're being um, as they're being executed by the drive. Um, yeah, so that is as smooth as we're going to get for velocities. We can see there it doesn't have that. Uh, Wow, they actually overlap, which is great. That's exactly what you want. Um, and yeah, so you can see the velocities have a nice smooth curve. They're continuous. You don't have that, you know, overlap that we had in the Python graphs at the beginning of this. So um, yeah, the move finished. So I'm going to stop this trace. Enter to quit. Yeah, hopefully this was um, this was helpful, and uh, this is a tool that's uh, available for use um, for anyone that uh, is interested in PVT. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much.